Hello everyone. In this lesson, we will be looking at one of the language skills in Muet, understanding vocabulary. Why vocabulary? Understanding what you read is crucial. A robust vocabulary improves all areas of communication, especially reading. It helps you to think and learn about the world. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to derive meanings of words through contextual clues and make references of unknown words. We will begin by sharing some useful tips. It is advisable to learn new methods and techniques to improve your understanding when you read a passage or text in the Muet reading examination. Let's start with tip one. You can infer the meaning of unknown words using contextual clues, pictures, or diagrams from the text. Tip two, try to understand an unfamiliar word by reading the sentence till the end. It will eventually give you an idea. Tip three, a good strategy is to look for definition, explanation, or examples within the sentence. Tip four, think about synonyms, words that are similar in meaning, and antonyms, the opposites. We will begin with tip one. You can infer the meaning of unknown words using contextual clues from the text. It is important to know what to do when you see an unknown word. Do not panic! The best way is to learn to infer meanings of words using contextual clues from the text. This simply means look at the surrounding words or phrases in the sentence. You can also look at prefixes and suffixes. It will surely give you some idea. Now let's go a bit into the details. Tip 1 tells us that you can infer the meaning of unknown words using contextual clues, pictures, or diagrams from the text. This can be done by having the awareness to the types of contextual clues in order to decipher meanings yourself. Try breaking down the different parts of a word from the base word or root word prefix or suffix to figure out what it means. For example, words like enclose, disclose, and closure. Let's look at the sample sentence. Others were afraid to disclose the rejection to a new partner. So in order to understand the meaning of the word disclose, you need to look at the root word first. Now the root word is close and it has a prefix dis in front of the word close. Dis here means not. Therefore, it means to not close but to inform. Let's move on with tip two. Tip two is Try to understand an unfamiliar word by reading the sentence till the end. This is crucial because you may not guess the meaning of a difficult word in isolation. But when you read the whole sentence, you will understand better. You may also come across words that you know, thus, making reading and understanding a breeze. The second tip, 
reckons that you try to understand an unfamiliar word by reading the sentence till the end. It will eventually give you an idea. This is a great way to access words to help gain deeper meaning of the text. For example, others were afraid to disclose the rejection to a new partner, fearing that this person would change their opinion of them. If you do not know the meaning of the word disclose, the other words in the sentence will give you some idea. For example, the rejection to a new partner and fearing that this person would change their opinion of them. Tip 3 explains that a good strategy is to look for definition, explanation or examples within the sentence. This is crucial as sometimes you come across sentences where the explanation can appear directly or indirectly. All you need to do is to read carefully and try to derive meaning by making references to the neighbouring words. Tip 3 explains that a good strategy is to look for definition, explanation or examples within the sentence. This is by far a very effective way to access words to encourage independent learning. It can be done through explanation and through examples. Let's look at the word vulnerable. You may not know the meaning of this word. So what you can do is to read the explanation in the sentence to get an idea. Through explanation, for example, vulnerable people are often in need of protection under certain laws so that others cannot take advantage of them. Here, one can get some idea of the word vulnerable by reading the explanation. People are often in need of protection. So now you know the meaning of the word vulnerable. Another method is to learn the meaning of the word through examples. Vulnerable people such as young children, the elderly or the handicapped individuals might have protection under certain laws. Here, you will get a general idea that vulnerable people are people who are young, elderly or handicapped. Wasn't that easy? This is a great way to access words to encourage independent learning. Tip 4 is to think about synonyms. Words that are same or similar in meaning and antonyms, the opposites. This is very useful because when you think about words that are similar in meaning, it can give you a better understanding of the sentence. Tip 4 asks us to think about synonyms, words that are similar in meaning and antonyms, the opposites. This is relevant because words next to the unknown word can be a clue or synonym. For example, when people are vulnerable or defenseless, they tend to protect themselves to avoid harm. Here, the synonym of the word vulnerable is defenseless and it helps you to understand the word better. Now, let's look at antonyms. Opposite information, antonym about the unknown word can be offset by words and phrases such as unlike, as opposed to and different from. For example, vulnerable people unlike those who can stand up for themselves 
tend to be the target of unethical or dangerous individuals. So here we get a clear understanding that vulnerable people are not people who can stand for themselves. Here's an important message. Do take note that in the Muet reading component, questions on vocabulary vary. You will see many words and phrases coined to ask you to identify meanings of words or phrases. One famous phrase that is always used is refers to. This phrase is used to ask you to give meaning to words stated by asking you what the word refers to. Another famous phrase that is commonly used in the Muet examination is can be replaced by. Here, you are asked to identify another word that can be replaced in the sentence that has the same meaning. Bear in mind to try out the word in the sentence to see if it is the right answer and not an option that will change the meaning of the sentence. Besides that, there is another phrase that can be used to elicit your vocabulary. Is repeated to emphasize. This phrase is used when the word is repeated a few times. There could be many reasons why a word is repeated in a paragraph. You must first read the sentence to get a clearer picture. So now you know that these phrases refers to, can be replaced by, and is repeated to emphasize, are used to find meaning of words. Now we will go through a paragraph about a study on facing rejection. Let's begin. Another study explored the consequences of believing that rejection had revealed a fundamental flaw. By linking rejection to some aspects of their core identity, people found it more difficult to move on from experience. Some say they put up walls and became warier about new relationships. Others were afraid to disclose the rejection to a new partner, fearing that this person would change their opinion of them, thinking they had baggage. This might explain why some people hide past rejections, treating them like a scar or stigma. Let's try question one. Baggage from line 8 refers to Is it A. Previous experiences? Is it B. Responses to failure? Or C. Personal beliefs? Which one do you think is the best answer? Is it A, B or C? Let's look at option A. Baggage line 8 refers to previous experiences. Previous experiences here refers to past experiences as stated in the last line. This might explain why some people hide past rejections, treating them like a scar or stigma. Baggage here does not refer to the literal meaning of a luggage or a bag, but rather a burden that one has to shoulder after a rejection. Therefore, this is the best answer. Now, let's look at option B. 
baggage line 8 refers to b responses to failure the word baggage does not mean responses to any failure as it is stated in the text it refers to past experiences so option b is incorrect let's look at option c baggage line 8 refers to personal beliefs the word baggage does not refer to any personal beliefs as personal beliefs may just be opinions and not necessarily a burden or experiences of the past therefore option c is the wrong answer let's do another exercise made.com is also putting its customers on the web's leading edge by employing a form of crowdsourcing and increasingly popular method of using the internet to tap into the power of the masses to generate product designs the catch customers wait 8 to 12 weeks for their orders that is time lag many buyers are willing to endure for 50 to 80 percent discounts let's look at question one the phrase the catch line five refers to a the quality is not guaranteed b buyers not being able to return their good or c the long wait for delivery which is the best answer let's look at option a the phrase the catch line 5 refers to a the quality is not guaranteed if you look closely the word catch does not refer to the guarantee given on the quality of the product as in this context catch means a hidden drawback therefore option a cannot be accepted let's proceed with option b the phrase the catch line 5 refers to bias not being able to return their goods the word catch does not refer to buyers not being able to return their goods as this idea is not mentioned in the paragraph therefore option b is incorrect let's look at option c the phrase the catch line 5 refers to c the long wait for delivery the word catch refers to a hidden or underlying drawback which is mentioned in the text a long waiting period the catch customers wait 8 to 12 weeks for their orders based on the explanation we can accept this answer therefore this is the best answer right let's continue with exercise three i am standing in front of a sewing machine very much like the one that natalie gumpertz must have used to keep her family alive after her husband walked out we will never know why he left and that is a big part of the museum's appeal each room is assembled or reassembled from facts birth certificates census details court testimonies pieces of cloth fragments of wallpapers the rest is left to us look at the underlying word appeal what is the meaning of this word 
Let's try. Question 1. Appeal line 5 can best be replaced by A. History B. Attraction or C. Purpose Which word do you think can replace the word appeal? Think carefully before you pick the correct option. Let's look at option A. Appeal line 5 can best be replaced by A. History The word appeal means to attract and not history although there are many key words such as birth certs, testimonies or fragments of wallpaper that are related to history. Therefore, option A cannot be accepted. Let's look at option B. Appeal line 5 can best be replaced by B. Attraction. The word appeal is mentioned in the sentence as it refers to the museum's attraction. We will never know why he left. And that is a big part of the museum's appeal. Therefore, option B is correct. Now let's look at option C. Appeal line 5 can best be replaced by C. Purpose. The word appeal is not synonymous with purpose. Purpose has the same meaning as reason, so this word cannot be replaced with the word appeal as it will change the meaning of the sentence. Let's practice one more exercise. She will make adjustments to the nest decor, modifying to accommodate the brood. Once they have outgrown it, she will move on. Though perhaps, if the nest is good enough, she might return to the following year for her next brood. Perhaps she will build a new and improved nest model on top of the old one. Perhaps she will find a preferred tree and start fresh. Focus on the word perhaps. Why is it repeated in the paragraph? Let's do question 1. The word perhaps is repeated to emphasize A. Lack of determination B. Diversity in life choices or C. Difficulties in building a perfect home. Which do you think is the best answer? Look at option A. The word perhaps is repeated to emphasize A. Lack of determination. There is a reason why the word perhaps is repeated in the paragraph. In this context, perhaps is an adverb that is used to express uncertainty or possibility of life for the bird and not a lack of determination. Based on the explanation, we can conclude that this answer cannot be accepted. We will continue by looking at option B. The word perhaps is repeated to emphasize B, diversity in life choices. In the paragraph, the word perhaps means maybe. Overall, the paragraph explains about the different perspective of building the nest decor from the present to the future. 
Therefore, the emphasis is done to show the diversity of making different life choices that may or may not take place. Therefore, option B is the best answer. What about option C? The word perhaps is repeated to emphasize C, difficulties in building a perfect home. In the paragraph, the word perhaps means maybe. It is repeated to show how the writer might make suitable changes as time progresses. This does not explain the difficulties in building a perfect home. So, option C cannot be accepted. Remember to keep reading as it prepares you for the real world. The more you read, the more you will come across with a variety of words that will help you to build stronger vocabulary. Hope you enjoyed this lesson. That's all for today. Thank you and bye-bye.